Hello there, welcome to another Q&A with myself. I'm Klamo Young and I'm your host. Today, I'm gonna to be answering the following question. How can I get back with my ex? Right, this is not something that I would usually kind of promote or condone because relationships end for really good reasons most of the time. Most of the time, the majority of the time, a relationship ends because it was supposed to end. Relationships are really complex things and we have to heed the lessons that they give us. So if something didn't work out with someone, then you're getting feedback, feedback that maybe you're not ready or they're not ready, or it's just not a good match. So again, they, they happen for really good reasons. Now, if you're obsessing or thinking about someone else that you've been with before that you maybe you wanna get back together with them, you're, you have to bear in mind that you're leaving on the table a lot of opportunities there. You've got some missed opportunity costs when it comes to meeting new people, maybe better matches, people who are in the right place at the right time, who are ready for a relationship. And you're leaving that on the table because you're diverting your energy and your focus onto these others, these people that you've been with and tried and it hasn't worked out. So remember that this is kind of like a waste of time. A lot of the time it doesn't work out again because you missed that initial lesson. You didn't learn it. And so you went back to learn it again and it cost you another year or two or more, who knows? So that, there's a lot of things that we can discuss before I give you some advice on how you could get back together with an ex. And, and you know, essentially this is what I'm really bringing these points up for is because I wanna make sure that you're aware of all the reasons why it's probably not a good idea to get back with someone that you've been with. So if you're seeking convenience and familiarity, then you're probably sacrificing your own inner peace and your own self-sufficiency because of that. Maybe you feel like you're empty, there's a void inside of you that needs to be filled with the presence and the love of someone else. I've been there before, um, it sucks. But ultimately, that person that had a failed relationship with you is most likely not going to be able to fill that void because that void can only be filled by you, right? It's your perception of yourself, your own self-power, your own self-worth. You don't love yourself, therefore you need the love of someone else to fill you up. Very simple in concept, but very difficult to grasp because emotions are powerful and they really make us do things or believe things or think things that aren't in our best interests. You know, they're all kind of coming from a place of fear, of scarcity, of just, you know, that whole, well, what if I'm never gonna find someone again? You know, what if I'm always gonna be alone? And I feel like that's a dangerous, slippy slope to be on because all of a sudden you can't see everybody out there or, and all the opportunities, not even if it's not even someone else, it could be something, it could be a job, it could be, you know, the, 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 the things you could do as a single person, the growth that you can achieve, the, the potential, all of that gets shut down in the face of that kind of fear. So that's why it's really tricky and slippy slope to be on. And so again, if you're looking at familiarity and convenience, you're really doing yourself a disservice because that's the time that you need to work on yourself. That's the time you need to focus on growing yourself. Before you get into a relationship with someone else, I'm sure you've heard that before, don't jump into a relationship with someone else until you're ready and you've kind of overcome a lot of the issues that you've had or the baggage that you've had, maybe from childhood or from your previous relationship. And that is essentially going to help you build the groundwork for a healthy, healthy relationship. So yeah, don't force something like this either. You know, um, don't force any relationship, but definitely don't try to force going back to an ex. It's just going to be even worse the next time around because they might detect that you're desperate. They might detect that you've got no other options. And so you're much more likely to be manipulated, taken advantage of. And I see this happen regularly where someone gets back with an ex 
and they did it through fear of being alone and just giving up before they met someone who was better for them. And when they got back together with their ex, their ex knew that that was the case because why else would they be going back to them? And that's when the real trouble started. That's when the breakup happened for X reason. Now you're getting X doubled, right? It's twice as bad as it was before because they know that they can get away with it because you won't go out there and find someone else. You're going to come back every single time, right? Or at least that's how it feels. So yeah, we got to look at the groundwork first. We've got to establish what are the real reasons that are driving this desire to get back with your ex. Now, Having said that, there are in times of history documented relationships that have been rekindled and um, I'm sure you know of some celebrities or maybe even family friends or just I guess anyone in your circle who has gone back to an older partner and made things work out, it's not a common thing, it's quite rare. So if you don't know anyone who's done that, then that's not a surprise to me. But um, we, we tend to remember those kinds of stories because again, they're just pretty rare. And so it's quite remarkable when someone's able to do it. Yeah, and it happens, but it's so much less frequent than you know we would want to believe because it just means that we have to go out there and meet new people you know if this is not a regular situation to stumble across if this is a very rare thing then w w the only other option is to go out and meet other people and that can be uncomfortable and it can be time consuming and it can be stressful and it can be deflating but ultimately what else have you got like if you go back it will probably not work out. Again, I keep saying this, and I'm sorry if you know you really are in love with your ex. I just want you to recognize that there is so much out there for you. So many people, so many potential partners and opportunities that it is almost ridiculous to, to, to bank on something that didn't work out the first time, right? Okay, so having said that, there are times when this works, Perhaps you met that person at the wrong time, in the wrong place in their life. Maybe they just weren't mature enough, they hadn't experienced enough. Maybe you hadn't experienced enough or were mature enough. And maybe now, after this time you've spent apart, you've met other people, you've had experiences, and you've realized, oh, okay, we definitely made a mistake by breaking up. We were supposed to be together. That, that can happen. That really can happen. Um, and so, again, I, I want to just circle back real quick. Why do you want to get back together with them? Now we think about the reasons. So why did you split up in the first place? Try to recall it really clearly because this is going to help you get some grounding, some rationale in your life. Um, was it because they cheated on you? Was it because you always argued? You could never communicate properly. Was it because they were emotionally withdrawn? Was it because you were? Uh, what were the reasons for you breaking up? Get really clear on that so that it's super crystal in your brain. And then uh, now we think about, well, what were the things we loved about that person? What were the positive traits and characteristics that really made us feel like we were better, that we were uh, in a better position in life, in a better place, a better person, maybe write them down. What were the things that you couldn't accept about that person? List those down, that they were non-negotiable, that were terrible, that made you feel like you were a piece of shit, or just fed up, or angry, or upset. What were those things? Let's list those down too. How many people have you met since you've been broken up? Have you tried to meet other people? Have you been in relationships? Why did they break down? Did they break down for the same reasons? This is a really interesting point, actually, because if you can recognize that your relationships keep breaking up or ending for the same reasons, then the common denominator is you. As much as you wouldn't like to believe it, it probably is you. If, the, if you had, let's say, two, three, four relationships, I would say more than two, 
and they keep breaking up for the same reasons, the common denominator has to be you. So, um, maybe it's the choice of where you're meeting these people. Maybe it's the type of people that you're attracting because of your subconscious beliefs about yourself. Anyway, we're segueing into a totally different topic there, but I just want you to be thinking about all of these different angles into your own mindset as to why you want to get back with this other person, okay? Now, once you've got all that written down, the good things, the bad things, why did you break up? Have you seen many people? Like, now you get a bigger picture of, all right, is this a logical thing to do for me? Do you have any options? Have you been on Tinder? Have you been out there trying to find other people? Have you been socializing? Like, if the answer to these is like no, or if you've got few options, or what are you doing to get more? Like, if you're just not going out there and acting in your own best interest, then I'm not surprised that you want to get back with your ex because we get lonely and we have our own social and physical needs and spiritual needs. And we can trick ourselves into thinking that the only way to fulfill them is to be with someone that we've had those experiences with before or we fulfilled those needs with before. But I want you to weigh up the pros and the cons of going back with that ex because emotions can make us do silly things. They can blank or blur the potential dangers of something if our emotional desires are strong enough that we want that short-term pleasure and comfort, right? So think about that. Now, if you are sure that there's more pros than there are cons to getting back with your ex, which is possible, like I said, it's possible, then the next step is to reach out and test the waters with them. Now, you've probably already been in contact with them or are in contact with them. So you might not need to reach out, but the testing the waters thing is like, well, we have to go out. We have to spend time together again, and we have to see what things are like now. That's what it means. So you have to find out whether they've grown as a person, whether they've changed, whether they're the same. Maybe you want them to be the same. Maybe you want them to have matured. You won't know until you really spend time with them. And this isn't just one time. This is like twice, three times, four times. Don't rush this. Never rush these things because you might be getting yourself into exactly the same situation that you were in before and you're going to lose time and opportunity and so are they. So test the water out. Find out what they're like as a person. Find out if they're interested. Are they interested? Flirt. Try to get the, the point across in not such an obvious way that you're thinking about or at least entertaining the idea of having something again with them and see how they reciprocate. And if they don't reciprocate, and if it's very obvious that they don't reciprocate, then I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't think that that's gonna work out. Uh, and you know, this is a really good practice because it's gonna give you instant feedback is going to give you instant feedback as to what their intentions are and actually whether or not you are still willing to go through with it. Because that feedback may be, oh God, this person hasn't grown up. Oh God, this person hasn't matured. Oh, they're still verbally abusive. Oh, they still have an anger management problem. Oh, they're still emotionally withdrawn. Oh, they're still a pushover. So there's loads of different things that you can test but just keep an open mind that it might not work. Don't set your expectations high when you organize your first date or your second date or your third date, because yes, it's exciting. Yes, it's fun to know that you're making progress and that you're getting someone else's interest, but don't put yourself down and, and don't take away all of the potential that you have around you by just putting your partner, your ex-partner on a pedestal and say, they're the only one that matters. So testing the waters, you know, never rushing things. Um, you don't have to cut off other people. I, I think this is one of the, you know, most important things to recognize is that if you are attempting to figure out whether your ex is still a viable option, you don't have to be, you know, cutting out other interested people, other interested parties right? Because they can actually help you make the decision. Maybe you just meet someone one day who just takes you like off your feet and is everything you want in a partner. And you realize 
Holy crap, I was just going to my ex for convenience. Now, I'm not saying that you should do this in abundance, like you, you, you can if you want. I'm just saying don't shut yourself down to the potential that of other people, like the, the potential opportunity of meeting someone who could just show you how wrong you were when you were thinking about like this thing that you're trying to do. Because it's important, you need to have that balance of perspective. And you can't get the balance of perspective if all you're doing is thinking about this person and they're the only people that you're that are in your they're the only interest, the love interest in your life. So don't cut off other interested people. I hope that this has really helped you. I might have been super strong looking back now on the whole don't do this message. But again, I just want to say that in my experience and with talking with other people and witnessing how this works, it's very unlikely that going back to an ex will yield a better, healthier relationship moving forward. It's much more likely that you're just going to repeat old accidents, old behaviors, old conditioned programmed responses. Because if you've been with this person, let's say for more than a year, you already have this idea and this programming of how you act and treat the other person, act around and treat the other person. And you are going to replay them until you reprogram them. And reprogramming behavior like that is actually quite difficult. So just remember that this is probably not going to work. Don't get your hopes up, but give it a shot. If it's what you want, try it out. See what happens. Let us know. Leave us a comment. Message us. Be more than happy to talk to you. And I hope you enjoyed this. Take care. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.